When my wife was away for the day at a pleasant little conference in Tuscany, three young women invited me to share their table for lunch. As I sat down, one of them in a sultry voice, teach us how to play the game of love. But it turned out they all wanted was advice on how to manage Italian boyfriends. I still think they were wrong to reject my strategic recommendations. But they were right on the nail in taking for granted that courting is one of the many different kinds of game we play in real life. Drivers manoeuvring in heavy traffic are playing a dip driving game. Bargain huntings, bidding on eBay are playing an auctioning game. A firm and a union negotiating next year's wages are playing a bargaining game. When opposing candidates choose their platform in an election, they are playing a political game. The owner of a grocery store deciding today's price for cornflakes is playing an economic game. In brief, a game is being played whether human beings interact, or whenever human beings interact for that matter. Antony and Cleopatra played the courting game on a grand scale. Bill Gates made himself immensely rich by playing the computer software game. Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin played a game that killed off a substantial fraction of the world's population. Khrushchev and Kennedy played a game during the Cuban Missile Crisis that might have wiped us all out altogether. With such a wide field of application, game theory would be a universal panica if it could always predict how people will play the many games of which social life largely consists. But game theory isn't about to solve all the world's problems, because it only works when people play games rationally. So it can't predict the behaviour of lovesick teenagers like Romeo and Juliet, or madmen like Hitler or Stalin. However, people don't always behave irrationally, and so it isn't a waste of time to study what happens when people put on their thinking caps. Most of us at least try to spend our money sensibly, and we don't do it badly, much of the time, or economic theory wouldn't work at all. Even when people haven't thought enough out in advance, it doesn't follow that they aren't necessarily behaving irrationally. Game theory has had some notable successes in explaining the behaviour of spiders and fish, neither of which can be said to think at all. Such mindless animals end up behaving as though they were rational, because rivals whose genes program them to behave irrationally are now extinct. Similarly, companies aren't always run by great intellects, but the market is often just as ruthless as nature in eliminating the unfit from the scene. In spite of its theoretical success, practical men of business used to dismiss game theory as just one more ineffectual branch of social science. But they changed their minds more or less overnight, after the American government decided to auction off the right to use various radio frequencies for use with cellular telephones. With no established experts to get in the way, the advice of game theories proved decisive in determining the design of the rules of the auctioning games that were used. The result was that the American taxpayer made a profit of $20 billion, more than twice the orthodox prediction. Even more was made in a later British telecom auction which, for which I was responsible. We made a total of $35 billion in just one auction. In consequence, Newsweek magazine described me as the ruthless poker-playing economist who destroyed the telecom industry. As it turned out, the telecom industry wasn't destroyed, nor is it at the ruthless to make the fat cats of the telecom industry pay for their licenses what they think they are worth, especially when the money is spent on hospitals for those who can't afford private medical care. As for poker... It is at least 20 years since I played more than nickels and dimes. The only thing that Newsweek got right is that game theory really does work when applied by people who know what they are doing. It works not just in economics, but also in revolution evolutionary biology and political science. In my recent book, Natural Justice, I even outrage orthodox moral philosophers by using game theory when talking about ethics. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be my thought for the day. Life is indeed the name of the game, and I'm more than ready to play it too. Usually, perhaps, maybe, maybe the next time I encounter a friend of mine at work, it will not be a game we're playing especially, we are playing the game of life. Maybe that is the greatest game of them all. And it doesn't just stop when one of us bows out or one of us goes graciously into the night. For is there any real victory in life? Is there any defeat in death? Are these things true? Are they untrue? How about you make the call, ladies and gentlemen, because that is, again, my thought for the day. Thank you.